Are you looking for a free online tool to be able to check the page speed of your website so that you can see how fast it's loading? If that's the case, that's exactly what I'm going over in today's video. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com, and in today's video, we are going to dive into three different tools that we can use to be able to figure out how fast our website is loading. So I'm sure if you found your way to this video, you already realize how important page loading speed is for your website, not only for conversions, but also for SEO and for just having a good overall user experience on your website. Okay. So let's just dive into the tools. Okay. So the first tool that I'm going to show you how to use here is called GT metrics. So I will go ahead and leave a link to all three of these free online tools in the description below. So basically what you're going to do is just pop your URL into this box and then click test your site. So GT metrics is going to take a minute in order to analyze the website here. But once it's complete, you will be shown this performance report for your website. Okay. So you will be shown different metrics in which GT metrics <laughs> took a look at on your website. So it's going to give you an overall score right here and then separate scores for different things. So you can hover over this little question mark here to get kind of like an understanding of what exactly these mean. To be honest, the thing that I really look at when I run this report is I like to look at fully loaded time. Okay, so basically the fully loaded time is how long it took the browser to fully load this website. Now I want you to keep some things in mind here. So how fast your website loads, it's relative, okay? It's not only going to depend on your website, your website server, and the things that you have on your website, it's also going to depend on how fast your user's internet works, okay? So that's a factor that we actually don't have any control over. So that's why there's gonna be two different loading speeds on mobile and on desktop, which I'll show you how to get that score in the other tool here. Okay, so usually what I like to say is when you're running this report, take a look at that fully loaded time. And clients are usually asking me like, okay, Mariah, like how fast does my website have to load? And I usually say, your website should be as fast as possible. <laughs> but if you're looking for some kind of like metric to go up against, I usually say faster than four seconds. So that's a good benchmark just to keep in mind here. But when you scroll down, GT Metrics will show you the top issues that are causing your website to load at the time that it's loading. Okay, so you can go ahead and click these arrows here and it's going to give you a little bit more details about what's going on here. Some of these things are going to be out of your control, okay? So it's going to depend on which website platform your website is built on. So if you're using WordPress like I am, you might have a little bit more control over server related things, okay? Because like having a WordPress website, you get to pick your hosting package, you get to pick your hosting company and all of that stuff. If your website is built on Show It, if it's built on Squarespace, if it's built on Shopify, you don't really have any control over any of the server options or anything like that. So I just wanted to make that note because some of these things might be out of your control here, okay? So what I usually tell clients is that you don't really have to get a perfect website loading score. Essentially, especially for SEO, a good rule of thumb is like, you just want your website to load faster than your competitor. I mean, like that's basically it. So like if a page on your website was showing up on page one, but maybe you're in position eight and your competitor is in position six, then one thing that you can take a look at in terms of like why they're ranking ahead of you is like, do they have a faster loading website than you? Because page loading speed is a known SEO factor. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of explain that a little bit because I do have some clients that are like, well, I need my website to load perfectly. And honestly, especially if you have like, different codes and different plugins for like marketing features, it's going to be really hard to have a website that 
looks good visually and is designed well and is appealing to the eye and has features that we need in order to run an online business and a website that loads in like one second. Okay. So like, that's why when it comes to website loading speed, the main thing is to prioritize and to optimize and fix the things that you have control over. Okay. So GT metrics, basically you can just click these arrows here and you can figure out more information on why GT metrics gave you a certain loading speed. Okay. So the other two tools that we're going to go over, you're likely going to find that you're going to have a different website loading speed for every tool. That's honestly just the way that it works. I would try to just take note of the average between them. Okay. And also really pay attention to the mobile loading speed, especially if you're worried about SEO, because Google's index is actually mobile first, okay? So what that means is basically like Google judges your website on the mobile version of it. So speaking of that, we're gonna head over to Google PageSpeed Insights. So I will pop the URL to this in the description box below, but basically what you do is just paste your website URL right in this box and then click analyze. So after a minute or two, you'll be able to scroll down and see your web page loading score. So automatically you're going to be seeing the score for mobile, but when you click over here, you'll, you'll also be able to see the score for desktop. Notice that the scores are different. Okay. And that's because Typically, mobile phones have slower processors, so they're automatically going to download a web page on a browser at a slower rate than desktop. And what also matters is the speed of the internet. So usually on mobile devices, we don't really have access to as fast of an internet connection as we would on a desktop. So actually, if you scroll down here, you'll be able to see that this mobile score was created based on a mobile device using 4G, okay? So that is just something to note because that's that's really important. And I see a lot of people getting really discouraged when they see this mobile loading score, but I just wanted to mention that there's different factors that come into play here. Okay, so we can see all of the scores or the times that this tool gave us here. And if you scroll down, you'll also be able to see opportunities for improvement, just like GT Metrics showed us right here. Okay, so we can go ahead just like GT Metrics and click on that arrow right there and it's going to show you suggestions on how to speed up your website based on the errors on your specific website. So like I said, you're definitely going to have to prioritize this because it's going to be almost impossible to get like a perfect loading speed. So if you go ahead and you click the down, down arrow right there, you'll be able to see what resources are getting loaded on your website here. And then you can determine if that resource is important here. So a lot of these are based either from my website theme or from a plugin that I'm using. So obviously I'm not gonna go ahead and change my website theme. So that's not really a priority for me to update or to change or anything like that. But if something comes up here that a plugin is really slowing down my website, then I'm gonna want to figure out if that plugin is really worth keeping on my website or not. Okay, so that's just an example, especially for WordPress websites. I will say one of the biggest culprits of a slow loading website is usually how big your images are, okay? So this is something that we all have control over regardless of what website platform that we're using. So before you upload an image to your website, make sure that it's resized, make sure that you're using the right format. A lot of people wanna use PNG format images all over their website, but those are actually really heavy and they take longer to load, okay? So you only want to use PNG images for like logos or design elements, something that needs a transparent background. Other than that, you can usually get away with using a JPEG image and those are a lot smaller and so they can load a little bit faster in the browser. So just changing that up on your website might make a pretty decent difference. Okay, so then head over to desktop, take a look at this stuff too. It's gonna give you different opportunities to speed up your website. 
Okay, so the third tool that I wanted to go over was Pingdom, okay? So just go ahead and pop your URL into the box there and then click Start Test. After about a minute or two, Pingdom will shoot over your results here, okay? So these metrics, these things that like create a performance grade, really similar to the things in the other two tools that we already went over. And then if we scroll down, we have suggestions on how to improve page performance, okay? So it's probably going to look pretty similar to the other two tools. You definitely don't have to run a page loading speed for all three. I usually like to go between two of them, but yeah, when you click the arrows on Pingdom, unfortunately, it doesn't give you like exact suggestions unique to your website like these two other tools do. But I know that people in the online space really love Pingdom, so I didn't want to leave this off the list. Comment below which speed tool you're going to use and let me know how fast your website's loading. Hopefully it's loading a little bit better than mine, especially on mobile. <laughs> But if you found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up and then make sure if you're not already, subscribe to the channel by hitting that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next video.